the Commonwealth has some pretty dark things going on. Whether it be Institute spying, a massive plague about to wipe out the Commonwealth, or even Preston Garvey running a criminal enterprise all under the guise of being the help. Well, in today's video, we're going to look at three fan theories for Fallout 4 that paint a similar picture, highlighting some of the dark things going on behind the scenes that may not be immediately obvious, but there's definitely evidence for. If you guys like this type of content, I do have a few other videos on fan theories with a similar theme, so check those out if you haven't. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Let's just jump into it. If you played through Fallout 4, you've probably become one of the biggest and baddest beings in the Commonwealth. In order to progress through the game, you pretty much had to kill some of the other biggest and baddest enemies and a lot of leaders of enemy factions. So why are some of these enemies so incompetent? And even further, why are just the people in general so incompetent? Despite the bombs dropping hundreds of years ago, there really hasn't been all that much civilization buildup. There's only in a few instances like the Institute where things actually have been built up and they are progressing with modern technologies. There are other factions collecting technology like the Brotherhood, but they're not really inventing or really pushing things forward, and definitely not on the same level as the Institute. So what's the deal? Well, basically one fan theory says that the reason for everyone kind of being dumb and bad in the Commonwealth is that the bombs dropped and a lot of them were exposed to radiation. Even beyond that, living in a post-apocalyptic setting, they probably are malnourished and have been for years, while you, coming freshly out of a cryostasis, should be pretty much as healthy as you were as the day you went in, which is pretty healthy. Even beyond that, you weren't exposed to any of the radiation unless that little bit caught you at the beginning, but realistically it didn't. So you don't have any of the cancers or tumors that many of the other people probably have. When you think about it, go around the Commonwealth. How many really old people do you see? Not that many. It's definitely a lot more people in their mid-age. Is that due to cancer or is that due to malnourishment? Or maybe just something totally different. Either way, the reason I brought up the Institute example also is look who's heading the Institute. Someone else who wasn't exposed to any of this. The other major force in the Commonwealth driving technology forward is another person who wasn't exposed to the bad elements or malnourishment that otherwise would have been prevalent for many of the Commonwealth's inhabitants. Hey. So the next theory doesn't really involve so much of Fallout 4's gameplay or the game of Fallout 4 itself, but actually the icon and poster child of it. That's going to be the Vault Boy, something that we've all seen countless times in the game's artwork and Mr. Maddie's thumbnails. But what is the Vault Boy actually doing? To most people, he's just giving you a wink and a thumbs up. He's a kind guy, and he's happy you're buying his games to actually fund further recreations of him. In reality, he might be doing something a lot more dark. There was a post on Reddit four years ago. It was basically to a question asking, what should you immediately run from no matter what. This responder basically said, if you see an explosion and the fireball is bigger than your thumb of your extended arm, you're close enough to inhale toxins and should probably run from there. People immediately made the connection. What if the vault boy isn't actually smiling or winking at you and giving you the thumbs up? What if reality a bomb just dropped, a nuclear bomb, and he's checking to see if he's going to survive it or if he's just kind of screwed? I feel like after learning this and looking at the vault boy, it makes a lot of sense. He's not winking at you, he's not even looking at you, he's looking at his thumb and and trying to see if that explosion is larger than it. Even beyond that, he is illuminated on that side as well as having a shadow on his backside. Is that from the explosion? Realistically, if the illumination is from the explosion, he is going to be dead very shortly thereafter. So this iconic Fallout poster child isn't actually as kind and gentle as we thought, but actually probably dead. All right, so let's say that first theory about why you're so powerful and dominant in the Commonwealth didn't really satisfy you. You don't buy it. It's based on a lot of observations that you don't necessarily agree with. Well, then we have a much more interesting theory, and that is the fact that you are, in fact, a synth. So the way this theory goes is you are a synth. You were created before the war. We really know very little about Nate and his backstory, naturally, as Bethesda does with their games, but we do know he was in the military. Maybe after his time in the military or during his time in the military, he did receive a pretty deathly injury. Having already been enlisted and having the government government involved in his life somewhat, he was inducted into this new government program known as the Synth Program. If you don't know, on some of these earlier Synths and even some of the more modern ones, basically the way things worked is they would upload your brain into the Synth to really achieve that next level AI to make them seem truly lifelike and believable. Now let's go one of two ways. Maybe you were just the first Synth, or maybe you were not the first Synth overall, but the first Synth to have your brain uploaded. And the reason this theory goes before the bombs dropping is to actually explain some of the things you find in the introduction scene of Fallout 4. First and foremost, why are you getting accepted into the vault? Your military service doesn't seem like enough. There's tons of vets that didn't get inducted into vaults. You are obviously special in some way. Even beyond that, you do have a Mr. Handy. That thing's expensive. None of your neighbors do have Mr. Handys in the entire neighborhood. Unless we assume you are somehow the most prosperous and rich of the bunch, that really wouldn't make a ton of sense. And then even beyond that, your wife, Nora. If you choose her as a player character, she obviously has the same skill set as Nate, who is a war veteran and 
potentially a synth. How does that make sense? Well, the theory is she's actually sent from the government to watch the synth you. She's there to monitor how progress is making if you're integrating into society well, as you yourself are unaware that you are in fact a synth. The government wasn't predicting the bombs to drop, so they kind of figured, well, we don't really have much use for her anyway, so they do kill her, obviously, and take Sean. Snappier synth and Nora's sent to spy on you kind of brings into question how do you have Sean as a kid, but there's a lot of other explanations for that. Obviously, there's things like sperm donations and other ways for you to really impregnate someone. So regardless, you are obviously a notable family, so they take Sean, who invariably has at least decent DNA, to the Institute and leave you there. Then as Sean does climb the ranks, he actually decides to release you. He wants to give his otherwise synthetic dad a real life and to kind of monitor what you do. There's actually dialogue options later on in the game as you're talking to Sean after you discover that he is on his deathbed, where he basically tells you that, yeah, he was just kind of curious as to what you do. Realistically, he would still make the same decisions as his real dad if you were a real person, so maybe he just wanted to kind of give you the potential to live a life. One final remorse of a dying man. So yeah, those are three disturbing or horrifying or whatever word you want to use in front of them, theories for Fallout 4. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of these theories. Of course, not all of these are mine. Some of them I kind of modified a little bit. Regardless, as always, again, I thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.